Okay, good morning. My name is Ern Bodvarsson, and I'm the uh, chair of the management department. Uh, I'm the interim chair of the social work department here, and I'm also a professor of economics. And I also do a lot of work on immigration, and I uh, had the pleasure of starting up this faculty research group on immigrant workers with Steve Billion. This is uh, a panel titled Immigrant Entrepreneurship in Minnesota. We're starting a little bit late. sure that we don't um, go too, past, too far past the noon hour, I'd like to get started. The structure of this session is that we will have uh, four uh, speaker presentations of approximately 15 minutes apiece, and then uh, the remaining time, about 30 minutes, will be available for Q&A. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my colleague in the economics department. Dr. Monica Garcia Perez, who will speak to us about immigrant entrepreneurship in the U.S. propensities and local impacts. And what I'm going to do is I'll sit over there and we'll uh, give you like a five minute warning. Yeah. Okay. I know that can be annoying, but my job is to make sure the trains run on time. Yeah. Okay. of 
entrepreneurship great, um, especially uh, for the second half of the 2000s, compared to the older groups. Asian also are big groups that are uh, growing, have a growing rate of entrepreneurship in the U.S. job is to see the survival rate of entrepreneurs, Latinos that are immigrants entrepreneurs in the U.S. Because one thing is they are very good at starting business, but then I need to know the story now after they start a business, how long do they last? Do they grow? What, what is the story after that? But obviously the more creation, the more uh, activity happens in an economy in the short run, in the long run, can, could be also very beneficial. So reason for entrepreneurship for immigrants, there are the push factor and the pull factor. The push factors are, as I mentioned it, well, unemployment rate in the, in, in the immigrant community is higher. So they probably look for other reasons or other sources of income. And um, an entrepreneur, if you started your own business, it could be one of the options. Discrimination in the labor market could also push them to go to another, air, another uh, sector or another activity where they, they could uh, manage themselves and not facing any of this uh, 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 discrimination. Socioeconomic status or cultural factors so that allow them so many, some of them may be coming from some uh, families that are already entrepreneurs and actually the immigration <coughs> itself is an entrepreneur activity given that they just coming to look for new opportunities and that's kind of the definition of an entrepreneur. They're more risk, uh, they're less risk averse than the average uh, person in their country and even in the US. The pull factor, achievement and appetite, is want to do something, they want to see it, uh, being their own boss, and maybe the socioeconomic status and cultural could be in both sides. They also want to pass along to their family something that they vote. So the composition of the new entrepreneurs have changed. The com this new rate, of new, high rate of creation of new business in the U.S. from the immigrant community has changed the composition in the new entrepreneurs in the U.S. By the race, I have come by, by the uh, origin. In 1996, 76% of new entrepreneurs were white. In 2010, that rate went down to 60%. Why? Because Latinos and Asian groups become a bigger portion of the entrepreneurs in the, in the <coughs> new to, uh, 2010. Latino went from 11% to 23%, and Asian went from 14% to 6%. If we have with uh, foreign born status, whether the person is, uh, was born in the US or otherwise, 29%, sorry, 14% in 96, we have now 29% of new immigrants in, in the US, new business or new business created by immigrants in the US. And these are foreign born. Census. I cannot promise anything yet because they haven't said the magic word yet. So there could be three ways, maybe more, if you actually looking at this, uh, you're um, studying this topic. But there could be three ways of looking at immigrant entrepreneurship. One is like climbing up the ladder. So someone who entered the, um, they can't 
country and start going to school and learn the language and then work in a company and then finally get some skills and then say, oh, I want to create my own business. And this story become very tied to assimilation. <coughs> so it starts learning the normal culture and, and working work ethics in general too in the USA. Like the typical the world thank you and things like you, you have to learn in some way because we probably don't use them. Uh, well, I mean, we use them in India. But <laughs> so, this, yeah. And then the second, the second way to look at, it, uh, look at it is the secondary market economy. Which is a small peripheral analysis. It's like an immigrant arrived to, to the new, uh, the house community or the new co economy. But then this immigrant find some kind of very concentrated, segregated some kind of area. And he's able, he or she is able to create this new business that in some way is just offering a service so, to some particular uh, consumers. And this become a secondary market because you know, they are not actually competing with the primary market, which will be maybe more like an offering to any kind of consumer. And the dual of the enclave economy, which is an extreme um, presentation of the previous one, which is actually completely segregated. So you, you can see that in states like California or Florida, where actually in their uh, businesses they say, we speak English instead of we speak Spanish. So there are some areas that you don't, you don't need, well, in Florida, there are some areas that you don't hear English at all, like everybody speaking Spanish. So it's completely, it looks like more of a claim economy, and maybe there is no, and the, the, the discussion and the literature is that they haven't been integration at all. There is some to actually just presenting your business to a that specific particular group of people without trying to necessarily, well, maybe because you don't need it, because you have enough population to survive and have your business going on, to the <coughs> other side of the, of the market. Yeah. Excuse me, could you give some examples of the types of businesses that you're talking about in each one of these categories so to have an idea of? Well, the, the interesting thing about the literature is that these are competing theories. They are not trying to identify any a specific one. They are competing theories and then some people can say, well, when I created my business, I actually went from the bottom up. I tried to go to school, I learned English, I learned um, I went to, I did an MBA, and then in addition to that, I worked for General Mills, and then because I worked for General Mills, I learned those specific uh, demand that General Mills needed, so I created a business that it, it can provide to General Mills. So it's kind of like going up a step by step, assimil assimilating in a way that you're learning not only the language, you're learning the work ethic, you're learning exactly what are the necessity, and you're offering to a general market most of the time in, in the climbing up the ladder. Doesn't need to be that you just offer your service to a general market. You could be offering the service to also a particular immigrant group or a particular uh, ethnic group. The secondary market and the enclave uh, economy looks very similar in the case that they tend to be outside of the general primary market. They start offering, um, it's like going to the global market kind of if you want to go uh, to, to that example, the global market it is trying to connect not only to the particular ethnic groups, they're trying to offer their products to a more general general market, that is uh, the native community. But also they have products that are very particular and maybe only people from a specific ethnic group will, will buy. But in, in Minneapolis, given that minority groups are really minority and they don't have, and this is what I'm gonna talk, they don't have the actual 